and welcome back to Everything's Funny at 3 a.m. We're playing the Cat Lady, and uh, this is Dub. All right, we need to break into Jesse's apartment. Let's go. Really curious to see what we'll find in his place. I'm guessing we're gonna find a mask to scare Brian with. Oh yeah, we gotta get we gotta get Mitzi to break in. Oh come on. It's right here. The lock is right here. On the door. Now that he's gone, we can get inside? Yes, let's do that. I'll close my eyes and you pick that lock, Mitzi. Okay, but no peeking. I'd never. You've really hurt my feelings now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now close them. Just pick the fucking lock. There. Job done. Great. Jesus, are these... They're not real people's faces, are they? Relax, no. Mrs. A. They're just Halloween masks. Oh, good. That's good. Because I swear, if I see another <laughs> bloody head... <laughs> yeah, I don't blame her for that one. Huh, we want the clown's mask. The clown mask, the devil mask. Let's take the devil mask. Okay, let's take the clown mask. Okay, we'll take the hockey mask. <laughs> Still think devils and clowns are scarier than, you know, hockey masks, but whatever. <laughs> no weed plants, sadly. The speaker is massive and it's connected to Jesse's computer. Whenever he plays mus some music, the walls must be shaking. Great. Jesse's PC. Jesse's PC, is that the infamous source of noise? That won't work. It seems someone's cut the power off. Oh, shit. Didn't think about that. It's not going to work, but... Socket examine. Okay, uh, use the extension cord, right? We have an extension cord. Then we just need to plug the extension cord downstairs. So, who's got windows over this side of the building? Well, Joe Davis lives right below. I guess we could also check one flat below Joe's. I just hope the cable's long enough. Let's I remember there's an we? open socket below Joe's place, so let's go. Let's go, let's go. Come on, people. Plug it in and get back to work. Alright. We're in business. Been waiting to use that extension cord for a while now. Right, 
should be able to use that computer now. Could you give me five minutes, Mrs. A? Sure. Sure. Why not? I'll keep an eye on the door. Okie dokie. Is it gonna be Brian? It's not him either. It's Brian. I knew it. I knew it. Oh, damn it. Alright. Let's get out of here. Come here, Mitzi. Come on. Alright. See what she says. So, what next? It's obviously Brian. Didn't you say you wanted to get revenge on Brian from Flat Six. Let's work on that one now. Okay, let's go down there. So it's either Brian or it's just somebody that we've already visited. Definitely in. Okay. Came back. Oh. All right. So <clears throat> either we knock on his door. No, I don't want to talk to him. There must be some other way we can get inside and check if he's who we're ta looking for. Okay. How are we going to do that? Here, let's go back to my place. Maybe we can get on, get access to his place if we like time on, climb on top of the uh, balcony or something. Okay, we can't go back to my place. Uh, what about cutting his power? Oh wait, maybe we gotta go mess with the water pipes downstairs. Okay, what else do we have though? Scissors, mask. Let's go downstairs. Nothing to do with the water pipes. There, you see. Salmon. Why would we put the... Okay, hold on. Why would we put the dress back on there, though? Cut. Okay, we gotta cut up the dress. We need to make some adjustments. Then do it! Now this is a dress worthy of the cat widow. Okay, nice. <laughs> Why don't you admit it was too small for you? <laughs> ha ha, bloody ha. <laughs> Why don't you just shut up? Whoever wore this dress probably hadn't eaten in years. 
You'd struggle to get a skeleton into it. Hilarious. This okay. is it. We've got all we need. Good. Great. Are you going to tell me about the cat widow now? Yes. It's story time, Mitzi. The legend says there was once a bad man who hated cats. He hated his neighbors too, and his job. And when it rained, he'd curse and smash things. He hated his bald head and his weak, ugly body. He probably hated himself the most, although he would never admit it. I think I see where this is going. One day, out of pure hatred for the whole world and everything that lives, he captured a family of cats and drowned them all in the river. That day, the sun turned black and all the birds went silent as the six kittens struggled for life. But trapped in a strong canvas bag, they never had a chance. They all died that day, all but one. The mother cat, in a desperate fight to set herself free, by pure luck, clawed her way out of the bag and swam to the shore. She lost everything that day, her beautiful children and her proud husband. Her heart crashed into pieces as she watched their limp dead bodies stolen by the current. Running after them, she followed them for days, for as long as she could. Then. Eventually, she lost sight of them. She stayed on the bank of the river for a while. The world stopped turning for her, her eyes empty and blind. And then, one day, she slowly slid down the bank and into the cold, dark water. She gave in to it. She let the river take her away too, cover her mouth, her ears, her eyes. But as the water filled her lungs and she started slipping into darkness, there was another strange feeling that burst in her mind like a ball of flames. Anger, rage even, her last craving before she drowned was for revenge. I think I'm starting blood. to see some... Uh... And so she here. returned, reborn and changed, a cat widow, veiled in black, mistress of the cats, her body of a young woman, but her eyes of a cat, and her face, white, rotten, face of a corpse, those who saw it rarely lived to tell the tale. She would get her revenge on all cat killers and cat torturers. But there was someone she had to see first, someone special, someone she really hated the most. Brian! As the evening came, it was strangely quiet in the man's flat. As he lived alone, he usually liked to fill the silence with the sound of radio or TV shows. But that night, he switched them all off, feeling anxious and tired after work. He tried to sleep, but couldn't. And for once, there wasn't anyone there he could blame for it. As he stared through the window, he kept thinking about how much he hated that view. He liked it once, a long time ago, when his wife was still there and they were happy together. Suddenly, he heard knocking on the door. Some part of him was glad, because that meant he could take it out on whoever decided to bother him. This should be good. There was nobody there. He almost felt disappointed, but before he turned to walk away, he suddenly noticed something down the hall. 
right by a wall, there's a giant shadow of a cat. You notice a shadow of a cloaked figure standing ahead. A dead body of a disemboweled cat hung on the radiator. Alright, well, uh, we'll go ahead and decide what Brian sees that freaks him out on the next part of the Cat Lady. We'll be back.